Greg, and welcome everyone. So like Greg said, I'm just here to touch on finance and the state of the market in relation to lending and interest rates and just to give you a bit of information about um, a couple of different features out there in the home loan market currently. So we'll start with the Reserve Bank official cash rate, which we're all aware of where it was and where it currently sits and where it was historically. For anyone that's in the room that um, had the pain of 18% when they were buying their first home some time ago. Yes, I hear a couple say. So look, we were down at record lows. Now, we've never seen a amount of consecutive rises that we've seen in the last 12 months. But what we are sitting in is historically a normal band. So between the four and 6% is historically a normal rate or normal reserve bank cash rate. So we probably need to be re um, reasserting where we're going to be in the future. It's not going to get back down to unlikely going to get back to the rates that there were before. And you know, a lot of people talk about the high interest rates, but when we look at it here, it's historically really at a normal level. Um, and there's probably going to be a prolonged period of where rates aren't going to move very much in the future, maybe up and down a little bit, but significantly probably remaining around this sort of 4% mark or a little bit under. So what I'm going to touch on tonight predominantly is first home buyers. So if you're a first home buyer or you have someone in your house, you want them to become a first home buyer. Um, I'm going to touch on what the offers are and the options for you for being a first home buyer are. So uh, stamp duty concession or exemption, um, the first home loan deposit scheme, the first home owner grant and the Victorian home buyer fund are the four main schemes here in Victoria that you can take advantage of as a first home buyer. So stamp duty, we all know when you purchase a house, you've got to pay stamp duty. It's not a great feeling to buy a house for a certain amount of money then have to pay another 5% on top of your purchase price to the government in taxes effectively. But if you're a first home buyer in Victoria and you purchase for under $600,000, you don't have any stamp duty costs. Um, if it's between $600,000 and $1 to $750,000, you receive a concession off the stamp duty. Now, that concession does fall away pretty quickly once you sort of get into sort of mid 600s, but it still is a concession all the same. To be eligible for the concession, basically, never owned a home before. You or your partner. If one of you have owned a property before, then you're not eligible for the stamp duty concession. It is also available for vacant land. So if you were looking to buy vacant land and build in the future, then you can get the stamp duty concession on vacant land. The second scheme is the first time loan deposit scheme. It's broken into three criteria, and the most common and popular one is the first home guarantee scheme. Now, this one, there's 35,000 places made available each year, and it's basically backed by the federal government. So you can apply as an individual or two applicants. Now that's changed. Previously, you had to be um, de facto a married couple, but now you can apply, you can borrow with a friend or, or uh, a relative, um, can be the two applicants, must be Australian citizen or permanent resident. Once again, that's changed. You just have to be, a per I just have to be an Australian citizen <coughs> solely. And then there's the earning criteria. So if you're an individual and you're buying by yourself, you can't be earning more than $125,000 a year. As a couple, it's $200,000. And the way that the scheme assesses, you, assesses your income is via your tax assessment notice that you get from the government once you've submitted your tax return. So you have to have your tax return done as you're not eligible to get into the scheme. It's only for own occupiers. If you're a couple and one of you is earning 160 and the other one's earning 30,000, so it's 190, then you are still eligible. It doesn't have to be capped to 125, but 200,000 as a joint couple. Once again, can't have owned a property, but if you have owned a property, Oh, sorry, it's first home buyers and people who haven't owned a property in the last 10 years. So if you owned a property back in 2012 and sold it, haven't owned one since, then you are actually eligible for this scheme as well. Minimum deposit required is 5% and the maximum purchase prices to be eligible for the scheme is 800,000 in capital cities and regional and um, regional centres and 650 for the rest of the state. Now not every lender has access to the first time loan deposit scheme uh, system, there's only 33 lenders who can provide this particular loan. That's up from 26 previously last financial year. 
But now all the major banks actually have access to this particular scheme. What the scheme actually provides for you is that if you were to purchase a place, let's say for $600,000, we'll pluck a figure, $600,000. Now I know there's not a great deal of properties around that price range anymore, but if you're a first home buyer, got a 5% deposit, $30,000. You don't have to pay any stamp duty. You see, you can get into the market with a $30,000 deposit. What that also means is you don't have to pay any mortgage insurance costs. As this is what this scheme does. It guarantees your loan for you. So there's no mortgage insurance like you would pay if you go and borrow 90 or 95% through a normal bank or through, through the banks. So that gives you a big saving as far as your mortgage insurance cost goes. And also, the lenders then deem you to be borrowing 80% of the value of the property. So you generally get a far better interest rate on your home loan than what you would if you borrowed 90 or 95% of the value of the property. The second part of the scheme is the regional first home buyer guarantee, which is more for remote areas because there is a regional component to the scheme we just ran through. Um, and we're not really in any of those areas, so we'll sort of skip through that part. And then the third part to the scheme is the family home guarantee scheme. Now this one is solely aimed at single applicants with a dependent. So you must have a dependent child, be a single parent, permanent Australian uh, citizen or permanent resident. Once again, can't be any more than $125,000 a year, this time as a single applicant, so there's no, no, other, no one else you can put onto the loan. Must be own occupied property, uh, don't currently own a property. Um, can't have a spouse or de facto, and if you are separated, but not divorced, you are not considered eligible for this scheme. Now this scheme, once again, is very stringent on their rules, and they do check pretty forensically that you do have a dependent child to be part of this scheme. But the good part of the scheme is, once again, you only need a 2% deposit to buy a property. So once again, we'll go to the scenario of a $600,000 purchase price. So $12,000 is what you need, no stamp duty. So you can get into the market with as little as $12,000. Now, that's not always that easy for even someone earning $125,000 in today's market uh, with, a single, as a, with a single applicant with a dependent child you all would know that the cost of living and everything it's, can be still quite onerous and quite difficult, but there is an option there. If you can um, find a way to show serviceability on a lenders calculator, then we can get that deal done for you. And once again, it's no mortgage insurance, so rates will be better, and it's guaranteed by the government. So the lender doesn't have to require any mortgage insurance. So it's, once again, it's a really good scheme, but it is limited to you know, a very small um, area of people who sort of qualify for that particular product. First time owners grant, everyone's probably heard of this one, it's been around for a long time now. $10,000 um, for new home builds up to $750,000. And the last one is the Victorian Home Buyer Fund. Now this one is a little bit different again, this one's um, sponsored by the state government and they will contribute up to 25% of your purchase price. It is only available through Commonwealth and Bendigo Bank. Maximum purchase price is 950, effectively, in um, Melbourne Metro. Regional 600,000 or less. Once again, Australian or New Zealand citizen this time, permanent resident, 18 years of age, must have saved 5% deposit again, or 3.5% if you're eligible and be earning 130,000 or less as an individual or 208,000 for joint applicants. <coughs> must occupy the property, must be a natural person. What that means is you're not a company or a trust um, and not purchasing from a related person. So you can't be buying mum's property. It must be an arm's length transaction. Now, the key with this scheme is, as opposed to the other ones we just discussed, is the government actually owns whatever percentage they tip in, they actually own part of your property. So in this particular case, let's say you purchase a place once again, we'll say for $800,000 this time, 
eligible in the scheme, got the loan, the government tips in $200,000. So it's a pretty good deal. Your loan becomes 600000 but like we said, the government owns 25% of your property, so you are limited what you can do if you want to do things down the future with your property. You can buy them out down the track if you have enough equity or cash to pay it out. You can buy them out and get them removed. But if you don't, and it comes in time, and you've now sold your property, and the government still has that guarantee there, they will take 25% of the sale of that property when it comes time to sell. Mm. The advantage for you is, like we said, you are going to be borrowing $600,000 as opposed to maybe borrowing $800,000 or $750,000. So you have a far significantly less loan, which means your repayments will be less. So there are advantages there. Without knowing the ins and outs of the scheme, completely, because it's not actually eligible to brokers, which is what I am, you would need to speak to uh, the Commonwealth or Bendigo Direct if this was a scheme you're actually interested in. Um, but uh, I don't know what the requirements would be. Let's say you probably needed a re-stumping and you had to, wanted to borrow $30,000 on to top up your loan. You didn't have to get approval through the scheme again. So there are some restrictions, but it is a good product to get you into the market if you're so way inclined. So for more information on these schemes, the first time I deposit schemes, uh, the website's there, nhfic.gov.au, and all the other ones are the Victorian State, uh, State Revenue Office website. Mm. They're all on there, and you can get some more information about those particular schemes there if you're um, interested or just want to have a look, or feel free if you want to have any queries, you can give me a call, my details are around, and um, that's all fine as well, or speak to me after the presentation's on, I'll be here for a while. The last term I'm going to speak about, and some people might have heard of this of recent times in the media, is called a mortgage prison, or being a mortgage prisoner. And what that means is, is you are stuck in your mortgage, can't get out. You borrowed when rates were 2%, and you just qualified on the lender's servicing calculator. calculator. Now, every lender has a servicing calculator, and they are all different. They all work out how much they are prepared to lend you. Now, you might have borrowed 18 months ago, rates were really low. You just got over the line on the lender servicing calculator and now rates have gone up. You look at your interest rate and go, oh, my rate's a bit high with this lender. I'd like to refinance. But when it comes time to go to the new bank, they go, yeah, we can do a half percent better for you. You find out that you can't qualify on the lender servicing calculator. Because when they assess it, they assess it at 3% higher than the actual rate you're paying. So if your rate's 6% you're paying today, you're getting assessed at 9%. So previously when your rate was 2%, you are getting assessed at 5 or 5.5%. Five so you find that you can't move. You're actually stuck with your lender. And this figure here, about 16% of households are what's termed a mortgage prisoner. Well, that was back in April this year. So that was a while ago. Now, the Reserve Bank doesn't set this policy. This is done by the regulator, APRA. And the central bank said, you know, now it's showing that almost half of the nation's poorest borrowers maybe mortgage stress because of high interest rates. Now, there's a difference between high interest rates and interest rates being higher. High interest rates today might be 8%, but as we showed in the initial graph here, rates are sort of sitting at a more normal rate as far as the Reserve Bank goes. So don't confuse high interest rates with paying a higher interest rate because you might be paying a higher rate on your particular loan, but I think where the Reserve Bank is sitting with rates in the future, they're going to be more of a normal range. But if you are on a higher rate and you can't refinance, there are now options for you that have been brought forward with the regulator that you can refinance if you've got a good history. There are restrictions on the loan and the type of loans you can do. And probably too much for me to go into too much detail, but banks will be able to, be able to assess your loan for a refinance at effectively 1% higher than the rate you're looking at taking the new loan at. So rather than having that 3% buffer built in, it might only be 1%. So it makes it a lot easier to try and do a refinance. But there are certain criteria to it and certain restrictions. Um, but once again, it is an option to get you out. So don't think if you have a mortgage and you think you're stuck in it, there might be options for you to move around and have a look and see what else is out there. But um, like I said, I'll be around for some questions later on. If anyone's got any queries, um, yeah, feel free to come up and have a chat. But um, that's it for me and thanks for coming out.